Blessings our fellow believers. On behalf of the pastors and leaders of COG Sasa, I would like to welcome all of you to today's Sunday online worship. It is a blessing that we are here together with our families, welcoming the Lord in our presence. We appreciate all of you, our viewers all over the globe. And um, it's really uh, a blessing that you are here with us every Sunday. And thank you so much. By the way, our Kids Jam will start broadcasting later. So all you have to do is just stand by after a Sunday online worship. And uh, we will be providing you another link for you to click f so that you can join us in the real-time presentation of our Kids Jam. As we start, let us all pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for allowing us to have this privilege, O oh God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, O oh God, that your word will continue, Father, to be planted in our hearts. And whatever exists, O oh Lord, um, scatter them to the wind, O oh God, so that they will fall of no effect. But Lord, let it be that everything that is from you it will be developed and manifested in our lives. We thank you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, we shall continue with our series, The Presence of God. It is actually the presence of God that we need in this present time and age because of the pandemic, because of the struggles that we're facing. The season of difficulty is in front of us. That is why we need the presence of God. Well, we started with knowing the presence of the Lord. We first knew the Godhead. It is the Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's indwelling of the believers. And then we followed it up with experiencing the presence of God. Kay ato naman kung nahibalaan kung kinsa ang atong ginoo, then we experience the presence of the Lord. O gunsang mga ebidensya aning nganong ma-experiensyahan man nato, we feel the presence of God. First, we experience the presence of God through His comfort, the unfathomable comfort of God. Meaning to say, ang um, comfort nga ginahatag sa ginoo sa ato ang dili nato matugkad, dili nato ma-explain. ba? Apostle Paul is telling us as well na in his fiery trials, in his very difficult moment, the Lord, the presence of the Lord is his comfort. Para halang gyapon sa ato ang mga, sa atong panahon karon. We are facing difficult season, but the Lord is giving us his unfathomable comfort of God. That's why we experience his presence. And of course, we experience the presence of the Lord through his trustworthiness. We can always trust the heart of the Lord. And then faithfulness of God. God is faithful. Whatever He promised, He will do. He is not a human being that He can lie. Kung sa iyang gisulti, ihagyud ng tumanon. We also experience the presence of God through His peace. Instantaneous. Kung mga tag peace, kalinaw sa ginoo, we experience His presence through His peace. And of course, last Sunday, we experienced the presence of God through His grace and His mercy. Remember, Grace is when God gives us good things that we do not deserve. Mercy is when God spares us of the bad things that we so deserve. That's why we experience the presence of the Lord because of His grace and mercy. And now we will begin today with cultivating the presence of God. Again, say it with me. Cultivating the presence of God. This is the part three of our of our, of our topic, the presence of God. And okay, um, cultivating. Unsa naman po ni siya, ate love. So, classic example. Kita membro ta sa pamilya. O ang, ang magtiayon, halimbawa, sa isa ka pamilya. Pag, when we're married, um, naana din ha, makabaluta nga uh, atong spouse, naana din ha man sa kilid na, permanente sa atong balay. Ang atong membro sa pamilya na ara sa atong mga panimalay. Kabalutan nga naara sila din ha. Pero wala na to sila hayaan or gihayaan na dili ta makigstorya sa ilaha, di sila makigstorya sa ato ah. Um, kinahanglan nato siya i-nourish atong relationship with them, right? 
Halimbawa, uh, friends. Kabaluta, daghan tag friends. I mean, true friends. That's why, kinahanglan na to i-cultivate ang, ang atong relationship with them by texting them, calling them, or writing a letter, emailing them, di ba? Because that is one way of cultivating our relationship with Him. Same is true with the presence of God. We really need to cultivate His presence in our lives. Now, again, this is our sub-theme and topic for today. It is cultivating the presence of God by growing together in true fellowship. Again, say it with me. Cultivating the presence of God by growing together in true fellowship. Why is it necessary for us to have true fellowship? Because fellowship is essential for growth. Now let us all read our text. First John, the whole chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness, and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. Truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Verse 5 and 6. This is the message which we have heard from Him and declare to you that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. And do not practice the truth. Verse 7 and 8. But if we walk in the light. Again. But if we walk in the light. As he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ. His son. Cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. 9 and 10. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. May the good Lord add more blessings to the reading of his words. Again, cultivating the presence of God by growing together in true fellowship. And let me emphasize the word true. Everybody say true. Dili ni siya banding-banding lang. Dili ni siya kaon-kaon lang. Dili pud ni siya chismisanay lang. Dili pud ni siya hisgot-hisgot lang. When we say true fellowship, it is an authentic fellowship and there is a deeper motives in coming together, in fellowshipping with each other. Now, let me emphasize to you that the writer of our text is Apostle John. John is within the inner circle of Jesus Christ during his three-year ministry here on earth. Kauban niya permanente si John together with Peter and James. So, kung istorya gani ang Biblia, Peter, James, and John, kanang John, mauna siya ang nagsulat sa first John. Now, he was the writer also of the Gospel of John. But in that Gospel of John, he was talking about the past. Okay? Past because it was Jesus Christ's three-year uh, three ministry. So, nakita nato sa Gospel of John, di ba? The Word becoming flesh. And that Word is Jesus Christ. He became flesh in human form. Mo nang nakita nila ug nakauban nila mismo si Jesus Christ. So the Gospel of John talks about in a way the past. And the epistle of John, ato ang text, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John is um, John writing it um, to tell of our present um, circumstance or present setting. Ayan. The word, who is Jesus Christ, becoming true and real in our lives. Um, tinuod gud siya sa atong mga kinabuhi. That's why nakita nato 
ang ato ay minabasa nato sa First John sa tung text. There is the word fellowship. So it is becoming true. The word is becoming true and real in our lives. And of course, he is also the writer of Revelation. And sa Revelation, ginasulat niya ang future. The word will come again for us for glorification. And that is the Apostle John um, who wrote the Gospel of John, the Epistle of John, and the Revelation. By the way, kung wala pa yun, kayo ninyo na kaila si Apostle John, si John is the person at the foot of the cross where Jesus gibilin niya si, si Mary, yung mother. If you remember, yun siya, son, behold thy mother, mother, behold thy son. Ang son dito, ang gi-emphasize ni Jesus Christ is si John. Siya to, o siya tong nagsulat sa atong text. Now, John is also one who set foot first in the empty or empty tomb of Jesus Christ. Meaning, John is with Jesus Christ. First-hand witness si John. So kung unsa yung gisulat, klaro ka ayon na nagkauban gid sila ni Jesus Christ during the time uh, of Jesus Christ's ministry here on earth. Now, um, let's read it again in First John chapter one verse three. Duha ka word. Uh, kaduha gibalik-balik ang word na fellowship. Now, sa Biblia, kung gibalik gani ang isa ka word, naghatag na siya og emphasis, nag, uh, naghatag na siya reiteration. And that word is fellowship. Diba? That you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, sa kaganina, it was a uh, New King James Version. And tanaw na to sa NIV. Kung pareho ra ba word gihapon na fellowship. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. Fellowship gihapon na word. And our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So the word fellowship is being stressed, being emphasized in that particular verses. Now even in verse 7, gibalik. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, what is fellowship? Sige na nato gamito ng word na fellowship. And then, ginasulti na po nato ang Greek word niya, di ba? I know all of you are familiar with the word koinonia. And that is the Greek word for fellowship. Ang koinonia derives from the adjective koinos, which means common. So, common, dili na siya pasabot na ordinary siya, but common, you have something in common within you. So, if there's something in common, you can share it together. Okay? I hope you got that. So, kita nag-fellowship ta with the Godhead, with Jesus Christ. So, unsa nga pa maagi? Okay, first, we accepted and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, right? So, mauna siyang first step. And so, when we accepted and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become born again, right? We, ha- we have been um, birthed into the Spirit. And by default, we become members of the family of God. We belong to the family of God. And if we belong to the family of God, we share. So, dinhina, we share in the richness and abundance of the family. We have true fellowship because we are sharing in the richness, resources, diba, of the family. Kay membro naman ka sa pamilya. So, you have the right now of all the blessings and the perks of being a family member in the family of God. Sige, basahon daw nato ning John 1.12. I know, akong mga kagrupo sa care group, memorize na memorize na ni. And let us read it all together. But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name. 
So if you are a member of the family already of God, I should say, you now have the sense of belongingness. There is a certain kind of special friendship. Ayan. And there is genuine care. There is nurture. And kung nabilong ka na, of course, minimal na din ang sadness. There is no more loneliness. Tama ba? And then, according to Neil Anderson, a famous Christian author, ingon siya about true fellowship. Aloneness can lead to loneliness. True. Kay usahay kung kita lang isa, usahay malonely ta, right? But God's preventative for lon- loneliness is intimacy. Intimacy with God will prevent us from feeling lonely. So, in true fellowship, there is intimacy. And intimacy is a meaningful and open and sharing relationships with each other. In Christ, we have the capacity for the fulfilling sense of belonging. So let me emphasize the word fulfilling. Di ba kung membro ta sa isa ka pamilya, we feel we so belong and then we are fulfilled. Parang ang sarap uh, ng buhay na kasama ang Panginoon sa isang pamilya. And kasama ang atong mga igsuon sa pamilya. Sa ginoo. And let me continue Neil Anderson's quote on true fellowship. In Christ, we have the capacity for the fulfilling sense of belonging, which comes from intimate fellowship with God and with other believers. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, balikan nato. Let's read it all together once more. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. Unsay um, ginastorian ni Apostle John din he. You know, John is making a statement here that includes the idea of communion and partnership with the Godhead and with one another. Again, let me point that out. This statement includes the idea of communion and partnership with the Godhead and with one another. Godhead. Atong ginoo, ug sa matagusas kanato nga membro sa pamilya. Since we are in this one family, he is saying that we have a common salvation, we have a common forgiveness, we have a common love that we share, we have a common hope, and we have a shared future. This text reminds us that we have, indeed, let me reiterate this, we have a common salvation, we have a common forgiveness, we have a shared common fellowship in Christ and with our fellow believers. Now, unsa ang mga keywords when you talk about fellowship? And let me emphasize again the word true, authentic, real. Kinud anay. Intimacy. Nabasa na nato kaganina with the quote of Neil Anderson. And proximity, meaning to say, you are near physically or spiritually, you are near. Diba? Ang fellowship, of course, you are near. Diba? Because there is some kind of a, a nearness in relationship. And of course, intimacy and proximity or the closeness and the, the intimate relationship with each other is based on the two words. It's commit and submit. It's in commitment and submission. By the way, friends, the word intimacy is a fellowship with our Lord, with the Godhead. And you know what? In true fellowship, in the intimacy of each other in the fellowship, this becomes the birthplace of God's purposes. This is where God's plan and purposes of our lives reside and revealed. There will be no true fellowship if there is no intimacy. And there will be no intimacy if there is no commitment and submission. It will never happen, igsuon ko. Or else, 
everything will be shudu, meaning to say everything will be fake, everything will be imitation, everything will be counterfeit and deceitful. According to Rick Warren, the famous Rick Warren, he said, we are created for a community, fashioned for fellowship, and formed for a family. And none of us can fulfill God's purposes by ourselves. So, meaning to say, we do not fellowship with ourselves. We can never do that. We need each other to make that happen, to have fellowship, right? It's, it, needs, it needs two to tango. It needs you and me to have a true fellowship because we are created for community. We are fashioned. We are designed for fellowship. No one is an island. We are formed for a family. And none of us can fulfill God's promises by ourselves. That's why I need you. You need me. We need each other. We need to be in the family of God so that the fulfillment of God's plan will be realized and will come to pass. Let me just emphasize the word intimacy and proximity. Intimacy again, as I said, fellowship of the Godhead, this is the birthplace of God's purposes. There will be no true fellowship if there is no spiritual awakening. There will be no true fellowship if there is no um, authentic spiritual growth. John 3, 6, let's read it. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Of course, flesh produces flesh, but the spirit produces spirit. Also in 1 Corinthians 1.9, 1 Corinthians 1.9, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ. So maugid ni siya ang truthful and authentic fellowship igsoon ko. Kaya nga naman, na ay ginoo, na ay Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, according to John 14, 6, He is the way, the truth, and the life. So if Jesus Christ is the truth, and if Jesus Christ is in the midst of us as we fellowship, there is definitely true, authentic fellowship, and we are indeed having a true, intimate relationship with God and a closer relationship with one another in the family of God. It is in this context of fellowship with a true God, Jesus Christ Himself, that we have the truthful and enjoyable fellowship with other believers in the family in Christ. It is in coming together that we enjoy Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, it is in coming together in a true and authentic fellowship that we enjoy and we share Jesus Christ, our Lord. We worship Him, we share Him together, and out of that worship and sharing with each other, there is joy. It will bring forth joy, of course, Never man jud maka-experience ta og joy kung dili tinud anay ang atong pagfellowship. Kung dili tinud anay ang atong pag pakigsandurot sa matag usa, di ba? Kung counterfeit, kung fake, wala joy. Kay kung nagpakaron inon lang ta, definitely there will be no joy. May pagwala tay um, fellowship nga ginatawag. Taphaw lang. That's why here, I am emphasizing true fellowship. There is intimacy and there is proximity. Let's, um, let's try to read once more verse 3 and 4. Kaduhagi mentioned in ang fellowship with us. The fellowship, the true fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. Ayan, verse 4, nabasa na nato. When we have fellowship with each other, and if we have fellowship with Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, then our joy will be full. So, sa ibang na version, or rather sa uban na version, it is complete. Our joy will be complete. The true fellowship 
is to bring all Christians together into that perfect, unbroken harmony and unity in fellowship. Again, in a perfect, unbroken harmony and unity. Joy becomes the consequence of that true and authentic fellowship. That if we come in fullness of the fellowship with God and with one another, there is fullness of joy, complete package, fellowship with our God, and true fellowship with the family members in God. Now, you mentioned ako kaganina, aside from intimacy and proximity, the other key word is commit and submit, or key words, commitment and submission. Our fellowship with God and with other believers demand Commitment and submission. Commitment and submission to God and commitment and submission to each other in God's fellow believers. This is the commitment to come together to pray with one another and submitting to one another in Christ. According to Andrew Murray, see Andrew Murray is a pastor who has a heart for missions. Ingonia. Our love to God is measured by our everyday fellowship with others and the love that this fellowship displays. So let me repeat that. Our love to God is measured by our everyday fellowship with others and the love it displays. Claro kaayo ang gisulti ni Andrew Murray. And I'm sure we understand that. Ephesians 5.21 Apostle Paul in Ephesians is admonishing us to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. I would like to emphasize to you that a true fellowship, having a true fellowship with God and with each other, is definitely one of the many ways to cultivate the presence of God. Daghan pa, ug daghan pa tag magwawalino from from next Sunday up to. September, and we will be tackling this um, ways and means to cultivate the presence of God. Ang ako alang toha karon is the um, growing together in true fellowship. But let me go back to this um, true fellowship, our topic true fellowship. It is one of the many ways to cultivate the presence of God. Why? It is in the family of God. That God's presence is better felt. Amen? Ugong mangutana ka, why will I join a fellowship? Or why will I go to a fellowship for that matter? Karong mga panabuhuna at alam, dili pwede ng fellowship. Kasi even if we are, um, or the city mayor is already opening the city for all of us, wala na yung FM pass, wala na yung curfew. So the surge of people are already there. So, pero... Limited pa rin. So, dili pa takaayo maka-fellowship or I mean, maka, maka come together o daghanta o ganang permanente frequently because um, halos online ta karon. But an online fellowship is really good. I tell you. I've experienced it. So, going back to my question. Why will I join a fellowship? Why will I go to a fellowship? True fellowship is actually needed in order for the church, for us individual, to thrive. Why? Because there is love, there is care, and there is nurture. Din ha sa inyong screen are reasons why we should go to a fellowship. We go and we join a true fellowship because that is our family and that is where we belong. This or that is where our family can be ministered, I can be ministered, you can be ministered also by our fellow believers. A family is so essential in that particular fellowship and I cannot isolate myself. We cannot fellowship with ourselves, di ba ingun ko? We need each other to fellowship with. We grow together in that regard. When we have fellowship, when we have true fellowship coming together, 
We are in the family where we belong. We are in a family where they can minister to us. They are so essential. Dili gud pwede na wala na. Because we can uh, be ministered to. We can be taken care of. We can be nurtured. We can be cared. We can be encouraged. And we can grow together. So much of what God is doing in our lives is through our relationship with others. That is why we need to have true fellowship. We should never underestimate the power of a human being to speak to you or through or to you through them. Okay? God speaks through our friends. God speaks through our fellow believers, leaders, our pastors. God speaks through those who we get to fellowship with. That's why necessary. It's so essential. So much of what God is doing in our lives is through our relationship with others, in fellowship with each other. In true Christian fellowship, there is healthy friendship. That's why we get to be edified with God by the godly believers that we have. Godly friends that we have. Diba? There is a healthy friendship. So there is um, a healthy spirituality as well. Healthy friendship, healthy spiritual life. Amen? That is why we are warned by the saying, bad company corrupts character. O dili ilan na siya saying, igsoon ko, na na siya sa Biblia. It's in 1 Corinthians 15.33. And let us read it all together. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Tinood gud na kaayo. Sometimes, ang uba, nagaingon, um, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. So it's really best to have a true fellowship with the true um, believers in Christ. Again, always um, be with someone you can trust, someone who is of good character, who can mold you, who can nurture you, who can take care of you, who can encourage you, so that all together we can grow in Christ. We should remember that there is a test of our spiritual condition. In 1 John 1, 7 to 8, tanawa na to maigson ko. But if we walk in the light, who is the light? It's Jesus Christ. As He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Meaning to say, if we don't fellowship with each other, ah, sila lang na, kay makasala na sila, I'm not a sinner. But you know what? If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Remember, the light is Jesus Christ. The truth is Jesus Christ. He is not only the light, by the way, He is also the truth. Now, in John 8, 12, Jesus applies the title to Himself. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, balikan daw nako ang previous nako na slide. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ. Let me emphasize this. The blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from all sin. Meaning to say, if we are not in fellowship with one another, this is the evidence that we are not walking in the light. And if we are not walking in the light, then we are not being cleansed by the blood. The test of our spiritual condition is this question. Are we in fellowship with one another in the light? Nabasa nato, Jesus is the light. If we continually walk with the light, with Jesus Christ, we continually walk in the light with one another. Let me repeat that. Since Jesus is the light, and if we continue to walk with the light, we continually walk in the light with one another. Then, we are continuously, continually cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is the light, the truth, and the life, the giver of life. When you are out of fellowship, you are out of light, out of the light. The blood does not cleanse in the dark. 
When you are out of the light, you will not be cleansed by the blood. John 3, 19 to 20. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and the people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his work should be exposed. It is very clear. People do not love to fellowship in the light because their works are evil and they do not want their works to get exposed. Claro, claro lang storya. So, we need to remain in fellowship with Jesus Christ, who is the light, and we should remain in fellowship with one another in the light and remain walking in the light. Amen. We should always remember the priority of Christian fellowship. There is prayer in a Christian fellowship. There is sharing of the word. There is encouragement. There is nurturing. There is caring. Asa ka paman mo addo? So remember, we should prioritize Christian fellowship. We should remember the priority of Christian fellowship. In Acts 2.42, Mabasa nato dito, the early church, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Steadfastly, ha? Walay, uh, walay stop-stop. Walay uh, dili sila ga, ga lag behind. They are steadfastly in doctrine, in the apostles' doctrine, and in fellowshipping, in the breaking of bread, in remembering Christ's death and resurrection, and in prayers. So, when there is prayer, when there is sharing of the word of the Lord in the true fellowship, when there is encouragement, when there is nurturing, when there is caring, definitely there is spiritual growth. And spiritual growth will remain in the true fellowship or will come from the true Christian fellowship. Do we fellowship with God and look at Him as our partner? These are the questions that we need to answer. Do we fellowship with others and look at them as our partners? If God called us in fellowship with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ, it is an honor to be partners with the Godhead. If we are in fellowship with our fellow believers, where the Godhead um, is at the center, then it is a great privilege to be partners with each other. We may grow together in that particular setting. We are called to be in fellowship with God and with one another. Don't forget that, friends, because fellowship is essential for growth. Let's pray. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you so much, O oh God, to be partners, to be your partners. And thereby, O oh God, as we continue to be partners with you, as we continue, O oh God, to be in constant um, fellowship with you, as we continue, Lord, to be partner, to be partners with you, we will definitely have a true and authentic fellowship with one another in the body of Christ. Thank you very much, Lord, for the example. Thank you very much, Lord, for that um, honor and the privilege, O oh God, to be with you, to be in constant uh, fellowship with you, and to be with, uh, to be with each other, constant uh, fellowship with each other. And thereby, we may grow spiritually. We may grow in the light we may grow in Christ. We thank you so much, Lord, for the message today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.